Hello and welcome back to another Learn Fabric episode on our series. Today we're jumping, jumping right in to shortcuts inside the Fabric Lake House. Let's jump right in. Let me share my screen here. And you'll see uh, we are landing right on PowerBI.com. So we'll start here at PowerBI.com, your home uh, experience here. So what we're going to first do is we're going to show you some data that's inside a lake very quickly. And then we'll show you how to make a shortcut in a separate lake house that's in a different workspace. We'll go over here to workspaces. We'll go down to our Learn Fabric. So we have our Learn Fabric series here. This is our workspace where we've been doing the entire Learn Fabric series on top of. We have a number of artifacts and things that live inside this, this area. We're going to scroll down until we see our main lake house where we've been loading a lot of our data called the Great Lake. So we'll click on the Great Lake, the lake house object. This will take a moment to load. And what we'll be able to see in here is we have all of our delta tables illustrated here on the left hand side and we can know that there are delta tables because there is a little triangle next to them so all the triangles indicate to us that this is a delta table and it's a format that we can use for delta all of this exists in the lake house storage so what we're going to do now is now that we see that there's data here let's imagine i want to share this data with another workspace or a different team of users but i don't want to give them direct access to this lake house instead i want them to use the data as a shortcut so let's do that next. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stand up a new workspace. Let's go back here to our main workspace. We're going to call it, go back to the location here for demo fabric. And I'm going to create a new workspace that is a new version of this. Workspaces, click on the new workspace icon or button at the bottom there. And I'm going to name it very similar, demo slash learn fabric. And I'll add a little designator here. So this is going to be 02. This is our next version of this workspace. I do need to make sure that this is using Fabric. So for our demos, we've been using the Fabric trial. So we got to make sure that that is turned on for this workspace. So the capacity is attached. Everything else I can leave default. No other requirements there. And I'll click Apply. And this will now spin up a brand new workspace. It's entirely blank. There's nothing in it. Now what we need to do is in order for us to make the shortcut, we need a lake house to put the shortcut in. So we're going to go change the work experience here. We're currently in the Power BI work experience. We will change over to data engineering where I can create lake houses. Clicking on data engineering, we get a new UI. We'll go over here to the lake house object. We'll click on that object there. It's going to ask me, hey, what do you want to name this? So we already have the Great Lake previously. So it'll say the Great Lake Part 2. So let's do a little O2 there. Great Lake O2. So that way I know this is a second version of that original data. You can name this whatever you want. I'm just trying to do this for clarity so that we know that this is a separate version away from our original Great Lake. We'll hit Create here. And then that will create our lake house. Now, initially, there's nothing populated here. There's no tables. There's nothing here as anything uh, linked in this table. So now what we can do is on the tables area, if we click on the ellipsis that is next to the tables icon, and again, it only appears when you put your cursor there. As I click on this, you'll see in the drop-down menu, we have the first item in the list here called New Shortcut. This is what we'll be using. And when I click on New Shortcut, a new workflow is linked to us. And so right away, you'll see there are multiple places where I can go get the fabric shortcuts from. I can go get fabric shortcuts from other anything in one link. So anything I have permission to, I can go get a shortcut. I can connect to an external data source. So a Data Lake blob storage account and Azure Data Lake Gen 2 storage account, that can also be linked here as well. This is very helpful when you have other IT or enterprise data tools such as Databricks or any other tool that you're using that are creating Delta tables for you in another place. So uh, that is used to, look, to link to external data. Also, it allows you to connect directly to an Amazon S3 bucket. An Amazon S3 bucket is their equivalent to a storage account as well. So the idea here as well is this you could be used if you have data in AWS or other locations, you can provide a shortcut to it without actually reading or having to copy the data over to your lake, which is awesome. This makes it any cloud a data source for what we're doing here. And I would imagine over time, more external sources will show up as we do as we get better at this. You're right, Mike. There's a lot of white space here uh, for that opportunity. And also the ability to even pull from a Dataverse, which is a very common scenario as well. Correct. So we're going to click on the Microsoft OneLake Fabric element here. 
And what this will do is it's going to look at all of the other lake houses we have built in our ecosystem. And you'll see right away, it knows there's another original, the Great Lake as well. So this one was made by Tommy, but I'm going to use the data that Tommy generated. So um, I've already made my new lake house. So I'll go into the Great Lake, click on that one, and I'll click next. This will let me see all the tables created in that previous lake house. So here's all the tables we just looked at. And then I can select one or many of those tables inside this list. So, you know, Tommy's owning the data. He He's the owner of that, of that lake house. So uh, I'm now going to be able to read only access to his information. And then as he updates his information, my table will be immediately updated. So this is really a good story around a single source of the truth. We can now have true data owners of information and not worry about copies of that data being moved over and over again. I'm going to click on the year batting table. We'll click on the team seasons table and we'll bring in maybe our financial table and maybe the batting table as well. I'll bring in a couple tables here just so we have some multiple links. I'll click on next. All of those shortcuts will be made. It'll let you have, uh, it'll show you where the source comes from. So this is the source. And then here are the new names. I'm going to leave the names the same way they were originally because I don't want to add confusion here. I'm going to make sure that they have a clear um, naming schema that matches the original source. And Mike, a big distinction here too is notice that it says the uh, the lake house tables and then the table name. We can also do shortcuts on files as well. It's another great point as well. So this is we're just focusing on the table and the Delta experience. This does extend to other areas as well. Clicking create here. We'll then go through and create each of the shortcuts for us automatically. And you can see here we have success on all of our created links. We'll click close and that's it. It's that easy. So the schema is now being updated. All the tables are loading here. And within a moment or two, you'll see that we can actually go click on the table itself. And now we can actually see this data right in this new lake house and we can observe it right here immediately without having to load any data. It's just reading the tables that are in the, the lake storage. One other area we'll note here as well is if I zoom in here, you'll notice the icon is slightly different. In this new icon, we have a little link icon. And now we also have the delta icon. This tells us, this visually tells us this is a linked delta table. So this is a table that has been linked to an, an original source, which is wonderful because now we can look at any of the data here, utilize this, and as Tommy updates his source tables, my tables will be immediately updated because we're physically looking at the same information. We both have permissions to look at the data. And Mike, that's really the emphasis here. We're not recreating the wheel. We're really not recreating anything. We're not copying the data. It is simply a shortcut to the source system. Yes. So as soon as a change I may make on the original lake house, refreshing involved and no other workflow involved. And speaking of no refreshing involved, this also lets us go back to, we're looking at everything inside the lake house. If I go back to my workspace again, you'll notice we also have other artifacts in here as well. You can see that we have our Great Lake, and we also have a semantic model that lives here as well. So we can immediately go into our semantic model, and this is those tables automatically live, living inside this experience. So again, it immediately builds a cube for you and shows you all the tables right there. So you then you can immediately start beginning to build new reports, new data points on top of all this information. And again, we're still looking at the same data in the, the original Great Lake House. So that's our demo for today. A quick round out. Uh, any other final thoughts, Tommy, or any other observations we should throw out here from a technical standpoint? Yeah, I think it's important to have the concept of the shortcut feature. It's not mirroring because I can actually create a notebook with these shortcuts. It is not going to reflect on the upstream source. I can create also connect to this in SQL in real time utilizing shortcuts. Mike, you can actually utilize shortcuts with more than one lake house. So we can actually recreate, or again, not really recreate anything, have one lake house with multiple shortcuts, utilize that in a Spark notebook, utilize that with the SQL endpoint, and I'm not refreshing or in a sense loading any additional data. This is huge. So I really like this feature. Um, where I think and where I see organizations potentially using this the most is Yes, it's useful to link between lake houses. And I think as Fabric becomes more mature, more organizations are going to try to find that single source of truth around data in their lake house and then share it to external teams as needed. 
But I think the real power here is it, just because Fabric just started, if you have Databricks, if you have an external system, if you have something else that's creating Delta tables, this bolts in directly to that system. So all of the hard work you've already done other places are directly accessible now here with shortcuts. And so I found immense value for me personally in my company. I found immense value already by using shortcuts that are linking to tables that are made from Databricks, tables that are made from Synapse. So incredible value here. I think this is a great feature and look forward for more enrichments coming around this feature in the future. With that, thank you very much. We appreciate your time today and we'll see you next time.